just sit down here, don't stand up forever. All these people say back and I'm sitting on box chairs your back. That's insane. Bigger, faster, stronger has got terrible technique. They go into the school and they, they will have a person, a kid, put two more hundred pounds on his back, it's about eight, ten inches high, and stimulate the rest of the team thinking they're stronger. That's not how we do it. Uh, we, we're below parallel like I, I, I showed Jack a while ago. But Bach, if you straight, if you want to squat the parallel, like I will make sure he squats the parallel. He needs to gain weight. At least in my opinion. Okay. Uh, and so if you squat in full range of motion, you'll gain weight. So if you sit on a particular box or even your wife, you'll always reach the same depth each time. If I keep putting weight on your back, you, eventually you're going to squat higher and higher and higher. You can't do short squatting when you're an athlete because you'll, you'll, you'll shorten up the hip extensors and right. hip extensors. Yep. It will destroy jumping. Yeah, you must squat all the way down. That's the key to stimulate muscle growth, absolutely. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, Box squats break the each century concentric chain. When you got one foot off the ground, you're breaking the each century concentric chain. It builds explosive power from a relaxed state, and that's exactly what running is. If you look at a top sprinter, they have a very relaxed face, and their muscles are relaxed. Yeah, relax. A fighter, you, you, you know, guys like me, you walk up like this, come out, kick your ass. But a fighter's got his hands open, he's all relaxed. His traps ain't up to here, hands open. Bam. They got all explosive power because they're going from relaxed to become more dynamic. And that's exactly what it does. Uh, box squats develop. Uh, explosive and absolute strength from static overcome by dynamic because some of your muscles are held static while others are relaxed. You notice that on the box, right, Jack? And others are relaxed overcome by dynamic. <coughs> it maintains a stretch reflex. I had you sit down for what, five seconds? Um, in a test, you know, Wilson has studies in, in uh, uh, Australia that top athletes, well, anyone can sit down for two seconds, top athletes for four, and get up with, with, at the same rate of speed. I did studies with a, with a, uh, a tendo unit. They take, uh, had a 935 squat at 308, and I had squatted 920 at, at, uh, and, at uh, 235. Yeah. So we're close on string, but Dave was 308, and I was a lot smaller. Dave was way more explosive, but I, in a way, I'm, more, I'm actually more stronger. And um, anyhow, I could sit, Dave could sit down for five seconds and maintain the same speed, and I stayed down for eight. And like I mentioned before, the connection here with football is a long snap. If you're down for a long time, you're, you won't, uh, the stress reflex will not disappear. You'll maintain your stress reflex. Mm -hmm. You ever watch a wrestler in the bottom? You talk about wrestling, got good hips, they're on the bottom, on the bottom, and then they roll the hips and flip the guy off. Yeah. Relax, overcome by dynamic. <laughs> or if you get a good wrestler, they'll, they'll play with you, and they're tugging, all of a sudden, they, you know, they ease up, and you don't need it in. Next thing you know, you're on your hip. Yeah. Relaxed, overcome by dynamic. That was going to be one of my questions. That, uh, do you guys use the tendo very often or just, you know? To test. Yeah, to test. I, don't need, I know what fast is. Yep. Yep. And I don't need a tendo for every reason. I'm the only one, as far as I know, in the United States. I did test each century to leave concentric to leave with a tendo. Uh -huh. I, hooked, I brought two tendos and I have, you know, I have two tendos. And I was the first one to use a tendo in America. Yeah, yeah. Sword X sells tendos. We sell lots of them. They gave me one. They wanted me to write an article because they know that popular. Right. And we took, I took 20 people that squatted at least 50 at the time which uh, we're retarded now, 11, 17 over 1,000, 5 over 11. But of the 20 people over 850 pound squat, the eccentric to concentric speed was in one tenth of a meter per second per individual. That was with speed strength training between you know, 70, 75 and 85% weights. Or circa max, which I participated in, I was the slowest down, I was the slowest one period, but the speed was the same. It was, I was like 4.7 down, 4.7 up. Dave Cave was, uh, well actually, uh, Dave was with us, he was in the middle and I had a guy called Joe Bayless. Joe was actually almost too fast, he'd get down and up by 5.5. Um, I, I did a test years ago and I used a calculus professor. That's who I bring here, calculus professor, physics professors, and mathematics professors, and engineers. <laughs> and, but I brought a calculus professor, and Matt Smith, who at the time had a 930 pound squat, who later squat 1160 fish, who put 550 pounds on a barbell. Now, I'm getting ahead of myself. This is about accommodating resistance. And I'll explain accommodating resistance because it overcomes the centric effect. Stretch reflex the greatest strength possible. That's where you get all the, that's where you get all the speed. Mm -hmm. All right, Matt squatted, we put 550 pounds on a bar on the very same box, and we measured the time in seconds, not meters. And Matt got down in 9 tenths of a second and got up. We did three singles at average 9 tenths down, relaxed, 9 tenths up. We took weight off the bar, added bands. When Matt stood up at the top, Matt's six, six, four and a half. He, when he stood up at 750 at the top, another 200 at the top. And on the bottom, because of shrinkage, it was 550, the original advance that the weight was. 
Uh, the, the times, there's three times average, three singles, 5.4 down, 5.7 up. He actually moved 200 pounds over three tenths That's faster. Right. Yeah. Why? Overspeed yeah. eccentrics and co contribute to stretch reflex. If I take a basketball and drop it, it hides a bounce. I throw it down, it bounces a lot harder. That basketball has rubber properties that causes the bounce, and the human body has a soft tissue that causes stretch reflex. That's where the energy is stored. Larger muscles mean nothing. You know, thicker ligaments and tendons mean a lot. Yeah. That's going to be one of my next questions. That's perfect. The uh, accommodating resistance uh, method of bands and chains, and you just explained it. That's good. Yes. Uh, when you want to use speed strength, use 25% band tension at the top. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, for us, it sounds low because we take, because we are power lifters, and I write a lot about power lifters, we train between 50 and 60%. But in actuality, if we took our records on a box, it's exactly where speed strength is developed, 75 to 85 percent. In other words, if my guy's a squat 1100, he might only box squat 950 or something. Right. See? So the two numbers are different. So, but uh, and if you look at the ratio, it, it, it works the same. The bar speed's the same, and the bar speed must average about 0.8 meters per second or slightly higher. If you get higher, uh, ask me about force production. And of course, if you get lower, you know you're, you're uh, um, you won't build explosive power. Like Box squats also make you less sore than regular squats. A box squat is a collision. Um, this is where the kinetic energy comes from. If you take two cue, cue, cue balls, one ball hits the second ball, you have a perfect collision. This ball coming hits it at 10 miles an hour, hits that ball, it leads to 10 miles an hour. That's physics. When you have two cars run in each other, uh, both cars get dense in, right? But when you box squat, when you sit down, part of your kinetic energy, the human body, is transferred into that box. And how do we know this? Because once you box squat, you actually squat about full squat, 15% more. So roughly somewhere about, you know, you lose about 15% through the loss of kinetic energy. But when you get rid of the freaking box, you jump out of the building. Makes sense. Okay. We get our highest box jumping to train um, by sitting on a box and jumping on a second box. Now, all of the ball players, Pete Champion played five years for the Raiders. In his fifth year, he came here. And uh, brought a, a trainer to validate this, but he wrote a thesis about this. And here's a guy, a lineman for the Raiders, 335 pound guy, 27 years old. <clears throat> On the weekend, I get his longest long jump of his career. Now, am I a genius or is somebody doing something wrong? I'm not a genius, let's face it. I mean, and I've got an IQ of 185, but that's out of a thousand. <laughs> But what I did, I had Pete sit on a bench, on a bench, matter of fact, a bench just like this, and jump out. And we used, we used uh, resistance, uh, uh, weight vest and ankle weights. For, it came in on, on uh, Friday evening, so Friday evening, Saturday, Saturday evening, and then Sunday before we left, we took off the resistance, took out the bench, I got a long jump uh, measure over there, and he got the longest jump of his career. Wow. You know, you want to get the most out of training, don't let your training get the most out of you. <laughs> Um, you're talking about explosive power development. Uh, the stronger you are, the more powerful you are. That's why I do your weight lifters. Okay, and uh, if you look at, for those familiar with Hill's equation of muscle contraction, objects at fast velocity produce small force. I could give Big Jack here 100 wiffle balls and he'll never throw one through that window. And Charles and I could give him, and then on the other end, I could give him 100 chop puts. And he might not be able to throw chop that far to break that window. But if I give him a baseball, he'd break that window out 100 times. Because the force and velocity curve match. That's a good analogy. That's perfect. Okay. Yeah. I, you know what I kind of want to know? Mm -hmm. I'm totally a lay person here, a beginner. You talk about posterior chain. What does that mean to just like, you know, why does it matter? Why does the posterior chain matter in sports? Uh, because the hamstring are, uh, contribute over 90% of the money. Um, mm -hmm. I got a call from the New York Giants the day of the Super Bowl, on a Sunday, they call me. And I, so I, I said, well, what do you call me? Don't you have a game? Well, we're laughing, you know. And I go, so they go, well, we need reverse hypers. And at the bottom of the court, when coaches come in and get rid of them, you know, the coach always moves in and out. So I, I asked him, I said, uh, you guys stretch your hamstrings all the time, right? He goes, yep. And I said, you pull them all the time, don't you? He says, yes. I said, you work them all the time, don't you? And he says, yeah. And I said, you pull them all the time, don't you? He says, yes. I said, you work your lower back all the time? He goes, never. That's why you pull hamstrings. My people wouldn't have hamstrings if they didn't have strong motor back. All right, I've got a spatial device that I don't want on camera, okay? I'm actually gonna show you guys a little bit. I'm even serious, go through that. Yeah. All right, it's incredible, nothing like it. I had Laura Dodd, who before Laura Phelps came along, she's world record, she's over 40 years old,